Hi, everybody, and welcome to the Becoming Podcast. We have a very special guest with us today, and uh, we'll introduce you to her in a moment. But before we do that, I'd like to uh, big call out to uh, one of my sponsors, Share, at um, webdesignshare.com for supporting and helping me so much. So thanks, Share, for all the, all the work that you've been doing for me. Today's guest is Tanya Mayer, who's coming to us from Germany, and uh, we're really, I'm so, so pleased to be able to chat with her um, because we have so many similarities and, and things uh, in common. And it's just uh, just wonderful to, to, have, um, um, to, to have Tanya with us and doing this. So Tanya, hey, welcome. And can you tell us, you know, what do you do? What, what are you about? <laughs> Well, that's a really good question. <laughs> but first of all, hi, hi, Jamie, and thank you very much for inviting me. It's a pleasure, and I really admire the work you do. Um, well, what do I do? Um, well, I started out uh, of um, becoming a medical doctor. Um, that was what I did. I, I mean, I'm still doing. I, I got back to it after having traveled the world because you know, when I was young, after medical school, I didn't feel ready for treating um, sick people or even being involved with sick people, being close to sick people. I, I, I was not ready. So I traveled the world. And then 15 years later, I came back and, yeah, and I started a practice for basically holistic medicine, or nowadays they call it functional medicine because it's much more hip than holistic medicine. Right. So looking at the root causes of medicine. But at some point, you know, I, I, I really noticed that also with, you know, the holistic approach, I'm not able to really help um, certain patients. And that's when I got into energy medicine. And also there, I tried a couple of different things. And at some point, I was, because I, I had a patient, she was really young, and she was about to die. And I was, I thought, I, of course, I do you know, support people in the dying process, but I did not feel that I am fearless. So I felt no, I, I I'm not true. I'm not true to my patients when I when I tell them about they don't have to be fearful because there is the afterlife and and there is you know the world above that where our soul travels to. I I felt like a liar because I didn't feel it myself. And this was the moment, and I, I remember I, I I did a meditation uh, retrieving a power animal that um, that I was listening to from Alberto Biolo, and then a power animal came to me, and that was the moment, and it was a black panther, black jaguar, and that was the moment I was like, okay, I have to sign up for this online energy medicine training, shamanic on, online energy medicine training. I have to learn that this is this this is the only place I can learn it. And that's when I got into energy medicine, the shamanic energy medicine. And now I'm combining the two. So I'm really like, I still have my practice, but um, I do maybe 50% energy medicine and 50% the um, functional medicine. Mm -hmm. Wow. That, I mean, that's great. It really is to be able to integrate both of them from there. And, you know, I'd like to talk a, a little bit more about that um, later on as well. But uh, with the, I mean, we did the course at the same time. A online energy medicine course so we've known each other for it's a few years now and we've gone through all the different stages with the courses with the four winds and uh, for me it has brought so many of the modalities that i've trained in before natural therapy into one um, umbrella which has been wonderful i mean you must have found that as well with a lot of other things that that you do because you you have a very very close with animals especially horses how did that kind of that work in with that? Yeah, actually, yes, because you know, before signing up for the for our online energy medicine training, I did a lot of other things. You know, I did yeah, I did like um this kind of emotion course. I was I, I was doing a lot of muscle testing, kinesiology, and I did like because I love animals so much. So I did training for energy medicine for animals specifically, and um I did a, you know, like a, a one year training in animal communication uh, because I wanted to be able to communicate with my animals and and understand what what is really about. And I like my my best teachers are really animals. That's who I've learned the most from. yeah, 
And and so, yeah, like you say, you know, doing the shamanic energy medicine, everything came together, like talking to our power animals. It's the same as talking to animals. For me, it's yes. the same. They just respond in a different way. And we just have to see that our animals, our domesticated animals, maybe respond in a different way. They're more human. They mm -hmm. have more attachments than power animals. Um, but but it's still, it's like the same thing more or less how to communicate how to retrieve information from the spirit world yeah so for me as well it was like ah oh, everything i did everything i worked before everything came together in this in this training yeah. yeah and 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 you're right i mean talking with the animals i mean i'm trained in holistic animal therapies um herbal medicine homeopathy canine and equine massage you know and you work with them and and i've been in some situations where um you know the, the, some of the some of the animals especially the horses are, are so scared and so frightened and to be able to allow them to work with me and vice versa and then to turn them around and by the time you leave they're following you around <clears throat> it's beautiful you know it really isn't it? it just it just goes to your heart every time and animals as you know don't have this thinking process of what if it doesn't work <laughs> oh, what's this, what's this person about? Have they? But it's just like a, an inbuilt trust they have in you. Yeah. Yeah. Like you say, horses, they're, they're also my, my, I have four horses that live with me and one horse who lives um, in a like more wild area. <clears throat> but they, yeah, they teach me a lot. Like, you know, like the way I show up, I know immediately how is my real emotional state. I cannot lie. Yeah. When I come to my horses, it's no way. You know, yeah. when they start spooking, I know, oh my God, my fight or flight response is pretty high. I'm yeah. not as relaxed as I pretend to be. So yeah. it's, it's going down to the real stuff, not this, you know, fuzzy, fuzzy. Oh, I'm so, you know, yes. one with everything. No? no, it's really down to earth. And then this is the, the test. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, the real you. They know the yes. real you. You can't yeah. tell a lie. You can't hide your emotions <laughs> no. from them. <clears throat> no, it's beautiful. It is beautiful. Yeah. And, and yeah. yeah, I've had horses as well. I was lucky enough. I had horses and donkeys and goats, you know, oh, wow. and, and I've, I've been in different farming situations as well. And, and it's just lovely. It's beautiful. It really is. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, coming back to, to working with, with people, from your point of view, because under your website is under Dr. Shaman, or is it, it says Dr. Shaman or Shaman Doctor? No, Dr. Shaman. Dr. Yeah. Shaman. <laughs> How do you work out? which way to go with uh, with somebody who comes to see you? Um, it's, well, it depends a little bit what their, what their intention is, why they come. But also, I mean, I always, I always open sacred space. So before I go to my office, I open sacred space. So I have guidance and that's what I trust in. And and sometimes, you know, sometimes people do see me specifically because they want an energy medicine session. But and then and then they mostly get an energy medicine <laughs> session un unless I find that their body needs some healing, you know, that they need to heal a little bit more their body before they can before we can move on to the to the to the you know to the energy medicine. Yes. But I also had, for example, one patient. And this, I just developed gradually. In the beginning, I thought I have to separate the two. Mm -hmm. So I did either, you know, my, my you know, holistic medicine or the energy medicine. And, and I had them really separated. And for some reason, my mind told me you have to separate them. And then I felt really uncomfortable at some point. And then I was like, well, why the hell am I separating? Why can't this just be like fluent? Yes, and then I started. You know, I had this uh, one patient. Uh, she saw. Uh, she came and she said she always, you know, feels like um, how, how do you say? Like when she's she's not like she's shaking and she oh, you know, right. she yes, doesn't yes, feel right. well. Yes, what? yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. Dizz dizziness, vertigo, dizziness. Yeah, yeah exactly, yeah, yeah. and really strong. Yeah. And I don't know what how how this came into me. I I looked at her and said, I think we have to extract something from your head. And she just saw me as a doctor. She looked at me like a little startled. <laughs> and then she was like, you're right. And that was, that was oh. amazing. That was really amazing because she, she, you know, like the, the, it was just so fast. 
and I couldn't help saying it. And yeah, and yeah, from yeah. that moment on, I I'm like, okay, I do both. What you know, like, why do I want to separate? Why do I want to just be one or the other? Yeah. It's just all me, and I do whatever I feel is, yeah, most beneficial for my client yeah, I mean, or patient. I mean, that's beautiful because you know, spirit will bring us to the stage where all of a sudden these things just come out of the mouth, and you just keep on going with it, and the people you think well are they going to react? And, and normally they come through in such a positive way. Mm. And then you start to work on them. When you're doing this, I mean, and, and the, the shamanic work, I mean, we went through, uh, we went through a lot of training. We, we peeled <laughs> off a lot of, lot of, lot of, lot of parts of that onion. We, we did some huge clearing and cleaning, you know, um, and it was, it was a very uh, emotional time. Um, I think for many of us in, in that class, and that was what it was all about. How many things or what sort of lifestyle changes did you have to make going through that process and introducing this to your to the doctor side? Um, well, I mean, I, it, when, I, when, I, when I when we finished our energy medicine training, I was I was so enthusiastic about the work. I really wanted to quit my doctor part. Okay. So I was a little bit frustrated and I was I didn't like my doctor part anymore. I wanted to just Isolate. throw it out the window. <laughs> and and but then, you know, like I, very soon I started because I didn't like that part anymore. I really differentiated from it. Um, I started to focus really on my shamanic work and I wanted only to treat in a shamanic way with shamanic energy medicine. So what I did is what I was pretty brave and, and telling all my patients and like really saying, okay, I think you need this medicine now and please lie down on my, on my, on my couch and we're going to, I'm going to treat you now that way. Um, so it, it, it was very fast that I included that into my daily um, practice. Mm -hmm. And it took some time for me really to integrate the other part. And that really just happened last year, to be honest, um, that I found, no, I'm pushing away something that doesn't need to be pushed away. Yeah. And um, more when I, when I got more into touch with the Grow New Body program, you know, like really um, cleansing, clearing your body and mind so um, that, that, that also helps, you know, to release uh, trauma and emotions. So it, they really do really fit together. They really do need to be addressed together, both the body and and the, the mind, the energy system. That's yeah. what I feel now. Yeah, I mean, that's great. I mean, the Grow a New Body program, um, as I said off here, I've gone, I've done it once. You've done it now twice or three times. Yeah, a couple or of times. More. Yeah, yeah. Sure. it's a whole, it's a whole, it's a whole area mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually. The cleansing, the the the, the emotional work in that as well. It's it's a wonderful program that they offer. Um, mm. and, uh, it has a, such a profound effect, really, mm. on on the whole body, and you feel so energized afterwards. Mm. You know, it is. Mm. It's a beautiful, beautiful program, and I suggest people to, you know, to have a look at that. They can contact you um, mm. as well to, to to look at that if that's you know mm. if that's what they what they want to do. So if somebody comes to to see you, you mentioned already a bit about it, but what can they expect if they if they can either came to see you in person or or over over Zoom or remotely? What would they expect to to to, uh, to happen? <laughs> good question <laughs> i mean why do people come see me um well most people yeah most people come see me because they have some physical problems some some diagnosis physical problems um and they want relief from that um or they have really emotional very very challenging problems um a lot of children also, a lot of moms who don't know what to do with their children anymore, like and before putting them into some care center, they they come as a last resort. 
So it's um yeah, it's not like the like I'm I'm not so much seeing people who who just want a little bit of guidance. So they have more challenging problems. Yes. That's what I can say. So and the thing is always to see also that also our body like problems, our symptoms that we have, our diagnosis, what we have. Um, that's not something I put in the focus. So that's always the challenging part for my patients to tell them, okay, we're going to go on a healing journey. It's a journey that we're going. I'm, I'm not treating symptoms. We go on a journey. And whatever the body then decides how, if it wants to heal from that symptom or not, that is not the main focus. The main focus is really, you know, yeah, healing where why am i here yeah what is my purpose um so that's always the main thing really to look at sure so a apart from you know like of course trying to give more nutrients to the body you know through supplements through when they come to me through iv infusions you know really cleansing helping helping the body you know to become stronger to eliminate the toxins we live in a very toxic world so that's more and more my focus also really the detox because we are not living in those nice times anymore where every, the air was clear and the water was yes. healthy. Yes, exactly. So we need to look more at the detox. And yeah. and I get some patients, you know, where I, you like maybe two years ago I would have done shamanic energy medicine and now I say, no, we need to detox first and then we do the shamanic energy medicine. Right. Right. Um, so yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I think they are, they're getting the whole the whole package really when they when they contact you or come to see you. And you mentioned about that, but yeah, the, the, to go back, the food and the water and everything that we have is, is so contaminated. You know, we're always blessing our food and doing as much as we can and trying to buy it as healthy as we can. Um, and for a lot of people, sometimes, which is always something that, that gets me a little bit, some of the organic food is, is overpriced, I feel. And people will just have a normal tendency just to go to the supermarket because it's quick and easy, even though the food there is three months old at least. But, you know, it's just finding that, that balance to, to have the healthy food, the healthy water, um, breathing fresh air, getting into nature, you know, mm. and it can be tricky. And you mentioned about children. I mean, these are the ones that are close to my heart as well, that the, the feelings and the emotions and, and how they're going to be living their lives. There's so many, so many um, mental health issues and mm -hmm. social, social issues, interactions, communities um, that they're not being a part of. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it, it's, it's a big, really is a big part, isn't it? When the mm -hmm. children come in and it's, it's quite sad that uh, yeah. in a way that the world they've come into and they've got to be ready to adapt and move to move up again um when you have children for you you know coming in to see you yourself uh, are you working with them in a specific way or is it generally much the same well i try to also look at their food intake which is pretty difficult <laughs> yes Yes. Um, I, I work a lot with them with power animals because, mm -hmm. you know, because most children that come, they are empaths. So they are very sensitive. Yeah. They, you know, pick up a lot of emotions from others. Um, yes. And so, you know, trying really to empower them, bringing them back to their power to yeah. be themselves. So that's, that's yeah. what I. You're right. So many of them are empaths now, you know, yeah. and we have a number here. Um, who uh, just feel alienated. They're not fitting into the mainstream schools. They're feeling isolated. They have no friends because there's no one to communicate with. So, you know, we have meetings where we try and bring them together just to talk and to share, you know, and I think that's so important. But there's are so many more sensitive souls. It's yeah. younger ones on the yeah. earth at the moment. Yeah. I mean, they're needed, you know. Yes. They're needed, be but it's a struggle for them in this world because – Right now, the, the non-empaths are dominating. Yes. <laughs> the yes. sociopaths and the psychopaths and the narcissists yeah. are yes. dominating a lot. So it's a challenge for the empaths, but it's a learning process they need to take also, you know, to, to really look at their own strengths and, and that those strengths are different from, from you know, other people's strengths. Yeah. 
For sure, for sure. Yeah. So if people, uh, when they're watching this podcast, is there one or two areas or things you'd like them to take away from this podcast about what you're sharing with them today? Well, I would love to see people really reconnecting more to nature. Um, for me, and for me, it's not going on a hike, you know, connecting to nature. It's really looking at a tree and and hearing what the tree is saying and what the river is saying, what, what the bird is saying. Why, why is this animal crossing my path? Why is this deer crossing my path? Really becoming aware again that nature is talking to us and supporting us, that we're not alone. And, and just taking time outside in nature, feeling, hearing, sensing, and, and yeah, being guided again. Because for me, it's really like, yeah, this is my most most intense, my most powerful guide is really is nature, nature with all those aspects. Yeah, yeah, yeah. very much, you know, and, and the number of sayings and quotes online about we go to great spirit, we go to our God, to our Allah, we go to whatever prime creator, however you want to call it, outside, and that talks to us mm -hmm. rather yeah. than organized religion going yes. into the building and being lectured. Yeah. You know, it's getting into nature, it's getting out and about and, and allowing yeah. that communication. When you allow, as you as you know, allow some of those comments to come in and you take heed, it becomes more and more and it becomes, you know, just it's, it's beautiful when you can go yeah. there. And as you said, it's not just being in nature, not just going for a hike. But looking at the tree, looking at the leaves, not so many this time of year, um, and just reading and just seeing what is there, yeah. allow that communication yeah. to come through. Yeah. Yeah. And that's it, really, that like that we get our own answers from, from nature, you know, like because there is so much power there. And, and so that we are like, we don't need anyone else to tell us how things are what we should do we can get those this information ourselves yes just a little example like yesterday i was i was you know i have my dogs i was walking my dogs i was walking by by a, a herd of sheep as i was i was looking at the sheep the sun was shining it was really nice they were on the grass have you know big patio um and then there were the little lambs lying in the sun on the grass. And mm -hmm. my intellect was like, oh, my God, those poor lambs. Easter is coming up. They're going to be eaten. This was my mind. And then, like, I'm okay. And I connected with the sheep. And the message I got was, I don't know if, if I can, you know, say it <laughs> the way it came through, but it was just so significant. The message is, well, we live life fully. Every day, 24 hours, seven. We are, we live who we are. We, you know, we live the way who we are. We, we are how we are created, you know. Yeah. Do you, and then there was the question, do you live your life fully? Wow. Do you live the way you're supposed to be? What, like, what that's, is, is that you? The way you live, is it really you? And I was like, no, <laughs> no. Yeah. There are so many times in my day that I do stuff. I do. I think I have to do this. I think I have to do that. And then I need to do this. Yes. And I was like, if I count now the time that I'm really, I am myself, probably this little young lamb lives more time fully on this earth than I'm doing. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm like, boo. Thank you for this little message. Yeah. So this is what I mean, really getting messages, getting information. I don't need, you know, like guru somewhere sitting and telling me things. Um, if we connect, we do get the messages that are right for us in yeah. this moment. Yeah. yeah. Definitely. Definitely. No, it's beautiful. It's be it's, it's, it is. I mean, I love it. I love this talking about this and I could talk about it like it's all a lot for a lot longer than we have here today. Um but it is, it's part of nature and allowing that communication to, to come mm -hmm. through. 
Um, anything for any last comments you'd like to share before we before we wrap this up? Uh, thank you. Cool. <laughs> thank you. It was a pleasure, Jamie. It's a yeah, pleasure as yeah. always talking to you, connecting with you. Uh, <laughs> and I hope our audience can take away something and, and I hope yeah, to inspire, to really connect to nature again, because that's that's why we're here. And and the the only sickness that exists is really our disconnection from nature and from spirit. And that's that's our only problem. In the Oof, end, I got I shivers just because I've been talking with some of my clients about reconnection, yeah. and just that word that we yeah. are disconnected from it. We really mm. are. So mm. no, that's, that's that's wonderful. Now we got um, I've got some contact details. Um, which I can put under the uh, under the under the YouTube um, banner and things under the video, and that's okay for people to contact you um, to to, do, sure. to work with them to do that. So, um, and before we carry on, um, please um, look at the the videos. Really, we're trying to get the word out there, pass this information on about all the wonderful people who are, who are doing some wonderful things and sharing that. So please share, like, subscribe. Um, a big thank you to Share, uh, not sharing, Share at webdesignshare.com for, for supporting me uh, in what I'm doing as well. So, uh, Tanya, hey, listen, thank you so very much for, for being a part of this podcast, the Becoming Podcast. I think there's probably at least another one podcast we could do, and I'd love to do one on animals at some stage as well, okay. empower animals, because that's a big thing in my life. Mm -hmm. Excellent. I'd love to. I'd love to do that, Jamie. Yes. Fantastic. Fantastic. <laughs> thank you very much. And thank you, guys, everybody, for tuning in to the Becoming Podcast. And I look forward to catching up with you soon. Bye for now.